This is going to be the first way you interact with Web3 via code. You are going to use only JavaScript technology and the Web3 JS library to query the wallet balance of an Ethereum address. You're going to figure out how you can query the wallet on the Ethereum network, on the Polygon network, and also read the balance of ERC20 tokens. So for the rest of this video, you're just going to be looking at me coding. So grab your laptop or sit back so you can see how doable it is to be able to create your first application interacting with Web3. Good luck. Once you've opened up your terminal, you're going to type the command cd for change directory and go to the directory where you would like your files to be stored and then make a directory using the command using mkdir as you see here. And then you're going to go into that directory that you just created. So you type cd and the directory name. Once you're in that directory, you're going to then start installing node if you don't have it. Go to the website nodejs.org to install node on your laptop if you don't already have it. Then you type git init to initialize the git repository within there and immediately I'm going to edit the git ignore file so that way you don't commit any keys or environment variables so I'm just editing it here. I'm going to ignore any files like .env. I'm also going to ignore the package log.json which I know is something that I shouldn't commit as well as the node modules folder. Now that's saved. I am now going to type in npm install web3 so I can get the lab web3 library, which is the most important library that we'll be using here. I'm just listing everything that's in the folder. There should be nothing there yet. So now I'm opening Visual Studio Code, which is where I'm going to actually write the code. So I'm opening the directory that I just created because in that directory, I have my Git repo and everything. So I'm going to open that directory here within Visual Studio, and then I'm going to create the first file. So I'm just going to name this file check wallet balance.js. It's going to be a JavaScript file. And this is where I'll write the code to check the wallet balance. So now let's go to the web3.js documentation to figure out how exactly we can read the balance from an Ethereum address. Okay, so here's a web3.js documentation. So they're telling you the first step so that you have to add a provider, which is where the actual network that you're trying to emulate is located. So I'm just going to start with that first line, which is importing the Web3 library. So I'm going to say constant Web3 is equal to require Web3. So that way I'm importing the library within my code. And then I'm going to initialize a constant Web3, which is going to have access to the particular network that we would be querying the data from. So in this case, the network would be an Ethereum network. So we just need to find the URL for an Ethereum network. So we normally call that the RPC URL. So I'm going into Inferior because I have an Inferior account. So that way it will give me an RPC URL that I can use to access the Ethereum network. Because remember, Ethereum is just a network. So we just need to read data from that network. And we're using the Web3 library to be able to communicate with that network. So I've actually decided to put the RPC URL within the environment variable file because it's a URL directly linked with my inferior account. So I'm just going to paste that, um, the location here. So I'm just going to type, I'm going to create a variable. I actually forgot to install .env. So I'm just going npm install .env, which allows me to manage environment variables. So now I'm going to import that library and initialize it. So I'm typing in require.env.config. So that is how I initialize a library. So now the code can utilize a .env library. And now I am going to get the RPC URL that I've put in the .env file by typing in process.env.eth underscore URL. I'm just doing a console log to make sure that I get the right information. Now, as we can see, the correct URL is printed out. So I know that that's working fine. Now I have initialized a Web3 object by giving it access to the network URL of the Ethereum network. So now I can do a very simple operation, which is to get the balance of an Ethereum address. I'm going to create a function and that's the main function. I'm going to make sure I put everything in a try catch loop just in case there's some failure. So it fails nicely. And within the try loop, I am then going to try to get the balance. So I'm just checking the documentation here. So it's web3.eth.getBalance and the wallet address. So I've just copy pasted that and put it into my code.
And as you can see there, the balance of that particular address is zero. I'm now going to pass it into a variable and this variable is going to be called balance. When I try to call it, it doesn't print because I have to do an await statement so I can wait to get the result. And I'm just going to change the function type to an asynchronous function. Okay, and the balance is zero as we have seen before. So let's look for another address on ETH scan so that we can find an account that actually does have ETH. So I just looked at a recent transaction and here we can see it does have 0.002 Ether. So I'm just pasting it here and then let's try to see what the balance is. Ooh, so it says this really large figure. So you must be wondering, where did it get that large figure from? That is actually in we. The smallest unit of a number within the Ethereum ecosystem is actually something called we, which is 10 to the negative 18 of one ETH. I'm just updating my Web3 developer roadmap here to say that you need to understand a blockchain data model because that's something that's really important. Whilst you program, you need to understand the fact that the smallest unit of a number within the Ethereum ecosystem is actually one way. So how do we do that within our code? How do we convert this way to Ether, which is the, the value that we are used to seeing? Thankfully, this library has this built in. So they have something called two way or from way. So right now the result we're getting is in way and we want to convert it from way back to ETH. So we can see 0 0.002 Ether. So we're just going to use it. It's called the, the method name is called web3.utils.fromwe. And automatically it converts it to the ETH version of that number. So there are no decimal points within the Ethereum ecosystem. They're just really, really large numbers. Brilliant. So now we see 0 0.002, which is exactly what we see when we are in Etherscan. So now we know that we are correctly querying the wallet balance of an Ethereum dress. That was so simple. I'm going to take it one step further just because I have your attention now. And we're going to do the same thing for an address on the Polygon network. So remember I said when you initialize a Web3 object, you're connecting it to the network. And in this case, we connected it to the network of the Ethereum blockchain. Now we're going to connect it to the network of the Polygon blockchain and then query an address within that blockchain. Instead of querying how much Ether the wallet has, we'll be querying how much Matic the wallet has. Because as you can tell, the get balance method gets the balance of whatever the native currency is on that particular blockchain. Obviously, assuming it is an Ethereum compatible blockchain, which Polygon is. We're now going to update the M file and we're going to set the Matic URL to a URL that connects us to the Polygon network. I'm just changing that in my code as well. So I'm initializing the Web3 object to now query the Polygon network. I've also pasted the address. And as we can see, it says it'll be 0.25 Matic. And then the result that we got And the result that we got was exactly 0.25. So we know it's working correctly. I'm now checking that exact same account on the Ethereum network. And how about we figure out how we read the balance for an ERC20 token? So, so far we've read the balance for um, the native currency, which in one case was Ethereum and in another case it was Matic. What about if we want to read the balance of ERC20 tokens? Should we continue to do that? Yeah, do I have your attention? Okay, let's keep it going. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to get the actual smart contract address of that particular token. Now, if we go into the smart contract of the USD token, we can see that we can query the balance of any address. So if I take the address that I had previously and I query it, it says it has zero USDT. So we should find an address that actually does have USDT stored in it. I'm going back to the latest transaction list and I'm going to copy one of those addresses and hopefully I find one that does have USDT in it. Okay, we found one. So I'm copying that address and I'm going to click on USDT. So that brings me to the USDT smart contract. And then I'm going to the read contract section within Etherscan and I'm going to check the balance of it. And you see a number there. So yes, it does have some USDT. So I can use that for this example. So to be able to read from a smart contract, you have to get the smart contract ABI. It doesn't matter what the smart contract does. You have to figure out what's the interface for that smart contract. So when you go into 
blockchain explorers like Etherscan, you can get the ABI normally, especially if it's if it's a public smart contract, something that everyone utilizes. So here, as you can see, I am requiring the smart contract. I'm just bringing that smart contract ABI within my code, and I created a file for it called USDT underscore ABI dot JSON. Now I need to initialize that smart contract within my code. So to initialize our smart contract, I'm going to go to the documentation and I'm going to just search contract. So you see web3.e.contract, they show you how you can initialize a smart contract. So you have to copy in the JSON interface, which is the ABI. And then you also have to copy the address of that smart contract on the blockchain that you are referring to. So new web3.e.contract going to import the ABI of USDT as well as the blockchain address of USDT which I'm getting here from Etherscan. I'm just creating a variable and then I'm going to paste that in. Now, if you'd like to initialize, if you would like to interact with any of the methods of a smart contract, the documentation also shows you how you can do that. So all you have to do is use the, the contract object, then use a method called methods and then use the name of the method and hit call. Sorry, that was the alarm for banana bread that I was making. Anyway, so we go back to the particular method that we would like to call. So as you can see, we're going to call on this method. So we're going to say the USDT balance is equal to the USD well, await because it's an asynchronous method. You're not going to get the result right away because you're communicating via the internet. USDT balance, you're going to say USD smart contract dot methods dot get balance assuming that's the method name i probably need to double check that and i'm just creating a variable for the wallet addressing question since i'm using it multiple times within the code and now i'm going to print that balance okay so we get an error so let's see what the error says Well, we forgot to say dot call, which is how you call that particular method. Let's see if that fixes it. And we still have an error. Bear with me. I promise you we will figure this out. Okay, so we forgot to copy and paste the ABI, which is the smart contract interface, which I mentioned earlier on. That is how the library, Web3 library, is able to communicate with the smart contract because it has the interface. Alrighty, so... It says that the function that we called is not the name of the function. And that is true because the function is actually called balance of. So at least the error changed. Wonderful. So we see that we get the amount of ETH that's within the wallet and we also get the amount of USDT. The only thing that I would say we need to change is actually the format of the answer because it is in the smallest unit within the Ethereum system, which is called we. So we need to convert it to the number of decimals that's within the USDT token. Do not assume that every token within the Ethereum ecosystem it has the same number of decimal places as Ether. So one Ether is equal to 10 to the 18 we. But I think when you use another token like USDT, it actually is only about six decimal places. So that is called MWE. So I'm going to be using the same method, which is from we, and I'm going to just put some, you know, so web3.utils.fromWe, and it's going to MWE. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay ahead of what's happening in Web3, learn how you can break into Web3 and how you can use blockchain technology to make your processes more efficient and participate in the new web.